before I get, begin, I was asked to greet you, brethren, by the Dinwiddie brethren. <clears throat> they send their love to you all. Okay. Uh, Brother Robert's text this morning is Romans 12, 8. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. This text is speaking about spiritual gifts. Um, the one that Brother Robert's going to be dealing with is showing mercy. Uh, it could be stated as the ministry of helps. Um, this has many forms. Um, I'm just going to give you a couple. Um, if you are a teacher or one who desires to teach, and you see the truth clearly, then you should teach. If you don't see it clearly, then you should have a seat. And don't uh, have any ill feelings towards the one who can see it clearly and ha who can teach you more perfectly. Um, help, uh, the helps has many forms. Um, if someone has a a spiritual need or a physical need and you can detect it you see it in them um, then you should do what you can do uh, sometimes you can't do much but you should do what you can and then you shouldn't murmur or complain when you're doing this yeah. because if you are then you need an attitude adjustment <laughs> in cheerfulness without uh, I looked it up. I kind of wanted to see what cheerfulness, what the, they had to say. Um, there were, I'm just going to give you the three words that kind of caught my eye. Um, without begrudging or uh, resenting or um, being un, ungenerous. Uh, mostly this um, is speaking of being a helper of someone's faith, uh, building them up, Barnabas was a good example of this in the scriptures. Uh, and now I'm going to let Brother Robert come and expound the text more clearly. It is Romans 12, 8. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. And this... um theme that we've been talking about is designed each member of the body how they're fitly joined together is designed by God through the ministry of Christ and the Holy Spirit to get us ready for that day yeah. we're going to be ready we're going to be ready for that day we're not going into that day blind uh -huh. not at all Romans 12, and I'm going to start reading at verse 5 to get a context. So we, being many, are one. And every one members one of another. Now you don't belong to yourself. Members one of another. Having then, isn't this reasonable? All right. He just made a statement. This is the way it is. This is not a, like up for debate. This is the way it is. Members one of another, having then gifts, we're talking about gifts, differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth, on teaching. Or he that exhorteth, on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth, with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Uh, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. This isn't like separated from the rest of the group. Another place we'll, we'll see, it talks about the gift of helps. Talk about the same thing. I mean, this is, um, this is very needful in the body of Christ. You're going to have to have someone like Barnabas around that can see things a little bit different than the rest of the brethren, and, and they can kind of like come alongside and say, hey, wait a minute now. We, we don't want to do that. I mean, it, it, we'll see when we look at Barnabas, that's exactly what he did. 
Well, we don't want to cast Saul out. Come on. You don't know the whole story. Let me bring you up to speed. In the context of our theme for this table in the wilderness, it's my desire today to show how showing mercy is related to that which every joint supplies. Now, see, that's my, my job, so to speak. To try to make this connection. There is, there is a very real connection to someone or a gift, I'll put it, in the members of the body to, that, that can, can help, that can be there to help. It doesn't, isn't necessarily, he's not asking you to, to, to um, ignore sin. That isn't, some people use this and say, well, see, we should just be tolerant. This isn't what he's saying at all. Amen. That's not what he's saying. Well, we need helpers. I need helpers. I need people that can see that I, sometimes I don't even see it for myself. Sometimes I think I did it for the wrong reason. Because, you know, your flesh will tell you that. Y'all, you just, you had the wrong idea. Some come alongside and say, wait a minute. What you did was right. Speaking the truth was right. Amen. Do it anyway. Say it again. Amen. They go home, let them go home. Say it anyway. Now, there's a sense in which every member of the body of Christ has been given a measure of this very virtue. You have a measure of this. But you may not have the, the, the proportion that he's talking about. He's talking about a specific portion. I may not have the gift of prophecy, but I may have the gift of helps. Yeah, I may, have, I may be able to be merciful where another person can't or in other words, they can't see it clearly. This is the point. It isn't like you wouldn't be merciful if you could see it. As soon as Barnabas stood up, they, they didn't argue with him. See, he had this gift. He had this ability. And, um, but it was, wasn't just for him alone. What really, what good would this gift be if it was just for you? You couldn't even use it. It has to be used on somebody else. You have to, this is a body. And what we're talking about is these body gifts. It can be argued that unless those who, have, who actually have partaken, now all of us here, I can tell you, I, I know all of you, and I, can, I know that you've partaken of the mercy of God. You've actually tasted and seen that the Lord is merciful. Yeah. Now, we got that over with. I can exhort you, see? All right, so since you've partaken of God's mercy... If for some reason you don't reciprocate mercy to those who need it. Uh -huh. See, now, could, this, could it be that this could possibly shift God's attitude towards you? If you decide not to be merciful and God's been merciful to you, well, I think we all know the scriptures on this. Amen. Would it provoke God? To, good, to do good to you? Well, see, this has got to be thought out. Remember David in Psalms 1825? This was after he had experienced being delivered from Saul. This was, a, this was a big thing. David knew this is it. It's over. But God delivered him. The Philistines came up, remember? The Philistines came up, and Saul had to, he, he had to stop chasing after David. He could have caught him if he had just let Philistines take over the land. But... See, he, he said, no, I got to go. David saw this. God delivered me. This is what he said. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. Yes. So are you merciful? Well, see, I have an inclination to think that you are. <laughs> I, I, that, this is what you would rather do. And that, that is your token. See, this is what God did. God would rather be merciful. Yes. He doesn't delight in the death of the wicked. He would rather be merciful. Yes. But see, there's... So see, you can look, you can kind of make this connection. If I'm merciful, if I would rather be merciful, this is my token. Ah, God's been working in me. See, he, I, I, he, I didn't used to be like this. Believe me, that mercy was the, the first choice in my old man takes. He says that thou wilt show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. Mm -hmm. David's making a vital connection here about God. God returns in like kind. Yeah. With the pure, yeah. thou wilt show thyself pure. See, that's the way God is. This is his nature. He's not going to ever change on this. It's the way he is. You show mercy, God's going to show you mercy. 
with the froward? Yeah. He'll forgive him. Well, that isn't what it says. With the froward, thou wilt show thyself froward. So all this is, you know, for my own self, and to give myself a little, little exhortation here, be careful about this. Be careful about this. When, when you, see, sometimes I'm convinced that God will put a person in your path that needs mercy to see if you'll give it to them. Jesus said it like this in Matthew 5, 7. Blessed are the merciful. He didn't say, you all ought to be more merciful. He said, blessed are the merciful. Because see, it takes energy to be merciful. God would be the first one to tell you. It takes strength of character to be merciful. Now, everyone that's been born again in Christ has this strength in them to be merciful. It's part of the new creation. You you can be merciful. You can decide, I'm going to be merciful. Blessed are the merci merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. <laughs> what about that? <laughs> you want mercy, right? Everyone that looks in the mirror, I'll tell you right now, no man's ever yet hated his own flesh. They want mercy. Yeah. They realize, I'm, I haven't measured up. If I'm just going to look at me, oh, this is bad. So I want God to be merciful to me. Well, how do you get it? Blessed are the merciful. Yeah. You'll obtain mercy. Yeah. So we can see that just as it's in the nature of God to express his merciful nature to man, all those who have tasted that the mercy of that same mercy are themselves merciful. So what about people who aren't merciful? Well, it leads me to believe that they, maybe they haven't tasted as much mercy as they think they have. Because you can't have an encounter with God and it not change you, as Abraham would tell you, and even as Cain would tell you. Now, however, before I go too far down that path, that's not the, what he's technically talking about in the context of this scripture. The apostle is speaking of spiritual gifts, talking about something that, he gave you in a greater measure than what he gave another person. I mean, like I said, we've all got, we all have the ability to be merciful, but he's talking about a very focused, a very specific kind of mercy that um, comes to us in the form of a spiritual gift, which I'm always very uh, um, suspicious when somebody tries to tell me that they have a spiritual gift to get some physical goods. I'm scratching my head on that one. It's a spiritual gift. It's not a physical gift. Yeah. Although it can manifest itself in that kind of expression, but it's a spiritual gift. It's for God. It's given by God. And it's given for God Amen. to express in his body that his body might experience some benefit Amen. from this spiritual gift. Right. So now you're going to have to be walking in the spirit to use it, right? You can't take a, nobody can, can misuse a spiritual gift. It can't be misused because you'd have to come out of the spirit to misuse it. And it like slips out of your fingers. It's like, whoop, it's gone. Amen. I can't do anything with this. I tried to make money with my spiritual gift. And it slipped right through my fingers. I had to resort to some man-made idea. Amen. Amen. So I'll be focusing my attention on the gift of mercies. Mercies, mercies. Boy, it sounds right up my alley. I need this mercies. The gift of mercies. Doesn't that sound attractive? Yeah. It's like God can work in you just to such a mighty degree that you would, your first inclination, your first one, would be merciful. I'll be merciful. Say, well, somebody will take advantage of that. No, they won't. <laughs> they, they, they won't. They, they can't. They can't take advantage of that. Now, they may abuse you. They may kill you. But that doesn't mean they've taken advantage or they've misused or they've done something wrong or they've handicapped. Mercy is mercy, and it's from God, and it does something in men. Amen. God's right now, he's put his mercy on display. We're living in a time where God's displaying, well, that makes sense then that he would do it through his people, right? Right in the midst of the church. He would display this aspect of his nature. to principalities and powers in heavenly places looking down and they say, Oh, did you see that? Oh, Brother Tony was merciful again. You see that? 
See, this is not, this isn't, God didn't do this to the angels when they fell. We, we all know this. They were summarily cast out of his presence. And now look at these people that were once darkness. Now they're light and they're being merciful one to another. Spiritual gifts, I love them. Just thinking about it. Now, I know, and it's interesting to note, that most, if not all, the gifts that are listed in this context of these, this chapter will most likely not be found in the official list of gifts. They're probably going to be absent. Which, if that's the case, then there's, this is going to greatly hinder the body of Christ. If these aren't recognized as something to, um, to, to, to be able to identify in you. Like, and if you're not on the lookout, say, wait a minute. I think a lot of people don't even know what is in them. They have no idea. Yeah. But this is, he tells us this so we can evaluate ourselves. It, am I inclined to be merciful? Well, if I am, well, it may, it may be that I have this gift of mercies, and boy, I'm going to apply myself to, to use it. You know, a gift that's given that's not used is of no value. It's of no value. What are you going to do with it? If you don't use it, then you might as well not have had it. Oh, but you might have to give an account why you didn't use it. It might be like that talent that's put in a napkin and buried in the ground. Yeah. It also could be noted, you know, I, I, and I said, the official list of gifts, that most charismatic and Pentecostals, because they're, they're noted for... They're big lists of the gifts, but their, their gifts are tailored for a specific use. But these gifts, if they were added to that list, you see how it could expand their understanding of gifts. But I also wanted to say it should be noted that neither the Church of Christ nor the Christian Church or the Baptist Church, none of them major on these gifts. This isn't a thing. And you, think, you have the gift of mercies, they wouldn't know what you're talking about. It's my opinion that God will not allow any denominational mindset the enjoyment of these gifts. See, if, you're, if your focus is on what you're doing, these gifts, they kind of like lose their significance. It's like, Amen. Amen. what do I need this for? Yeah. What does this have to do with me? I'm not implying that you will not find these gifts in serious people that are in the denominations. Don't get me wrong. There's people, God has people everywhere. And, um, but see, invariably, he'll call them out of Babylon, right? He will call them out because um, he's, he's creating a, his own church. Let's take a minute here to observe the context in which the apostle uses these words. Now, I'm not going to give a detailed account of these words, but I wanted to do this because this is, this is part of them. It, it, I don't know that you can separate these things. He says, having gifts then differ, differing according to the grace that is given. So we, these gifts, they're different, they're distinct, and yet they're for the same body. It's not like a different, like you're going to take this and go use it at the mall, and this is going to be used at the country club or whatever. These gifts are used in the same body. Yeah. So see, all these gifts, we should be very familiar with these gifts because if we're in the body. Because someone's using them, someone's got them. And so as they use it, it would seem to me that you would glorify God when you recognize the gift that he gave someone. Amen. Say, oh, look at that. Look what God's given Brother Ricky. So he says here, prophesying. Now prophesying was a spiritually inspired speaker, a prophet, a prophet. Now the apostle is not speaking of the prophets of old time or somebody who can foretell the future. That's what he's talking about. You know, he has in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, it says, God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily, prophets. God put them in the church because we need them. We need prophets. We need people that are able to be able to discern. They, they're, they will be able to, to, to speak in such a way that you can lead the other people, have an understanding inspired well does that mean that it's on the same level as the scriptures well see i don't i don't think that that's what he's talking about i think he's talking about somebody who understands the scriptures mm -hmm. understands the implications of it and um can transfer that 
lead the people in such a way that they know that the thing is of God. And anyway, that's, that's my understanding of it. But the, all these things are fitting together. In other words, I don't know that you can have the other gifts unless you have, to some degree, you have these first gifts in place. I don't know that how would you use them. I don't know how you would, how would frame a context for them. But God set the members in the, and he did it in such a way. First the apostles. He isn't like the prophets supersede the apostles. It was first the apostles. Yeah. But there are, there are prophets in the church, and we shouldn't shy away from saying so-and-so. He's a prophet. Look at everything he says. It's different. It has, I mean, I know we've all noticed this about some of the members of the body. When they speak, it's like you, you're like caught up. Why? Because they have understanding from God. They're prophets. Ministering. I like the way he breaks these down here. This is, this is really, see, I was reading through this. And I was like, well, this, is he talking about our assembly? Well, I was glad I could do that. There's a lot of places I've been that, that this, I'd be like, what are you talking about? This doesn't happen in there. Amen. Ministering. One who attends and pressing toward the advancements of others and the understanding of eternal views. They, they have the ability to be able to see a need. I'm talking about a spiritual need of understanding. This person does not understand. And you have the capacity to be able, one, to be able to know that they don't understand it. And then to minister in such a way that you would help them. See, he gave them first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers after that miracles. Then... Gifts of healing helps government. But see, what I'm, what I'm talking about today is, is the, the after, the, after that. It's, it's, it's after these first gifts have been established in the, in the church, in the assembly, and are active, and are, you actually got some godly teaching going on. You got some inspired speakers speaking. Now these other things, they can, they can be useful in that context. That's what I'm saying. Teaching, one who finds great satisfaction in the advancement of understanding through learning. And teaching that to someone. They can actually teach. They don't, it's not like you get up and you read the Bible. That's good. But you have the ability to teach me what it means. I, I, I like teachers. Yeah. We have a, a great resource of teachers. Have you noticed that? Yeah. People that can teach. And, and every time I sit under them, I learn something. That's how I know they're a teacher. Amen. They taught me. An exhortation. Now, we're making some advancement on this. Exhortation. The ability to be able to move someone to do something about what was just spoken. That not just, it isn't like you have another sermon. It's, it, you take what, what was put out there and you put handles on it. You help people to, to see, I can do this. The, the definition is to call near, to invite or beseech, to entreat, to cause, to desire. Oh, I want to be good at that. I want to, so when I get up to exhort you, brethren, I want to speak in such a way that in the end you say, I want to do that. Yeah. I want to do that. Amen. What is it? I just exhorted you then, right? Amen. Giving. Now, here's one the TV preachers can make some money on, right? Giving. Giving. Yeah, the TV evangelists have, they've made an attempt to exploit this, but they haven't done it. They haven't done it. Giving in the context is, in this context, is someone who shares what they've been given, and he's not necessarily speaking about money. Talking about, I, I'm going to give you what the Lord's given me, and I'm going to do it in such a way that you're going to be benefited by it. Now, I, I'm not saying it couldn't be expressed and monetarily, but that is not the, the first thing he's talking about here. In the context of what he, he's going to put giving right in the middle of all these spiritual gifts, and then we're going to instantly run to money? This is not, of course, turn on the television, that's what's going to happen. He's like, well, you probably got the gift of giving, send me $500. It's not what he's talking about. Like I said, it could, it could express itself in that way if you have the need and I have the gift of giving, and, and I see the need, I could, it could express itself that way. But I would, myself personally, have been greatly advantaged, you know, when, when one of the brethren have seen something, I didn't, and they gave it to me. They helped me. Amen. 
giving. I like thinking about it like that myself. I like thinking about it like that. Like, because I, I, sometimes you take inventory, you say, well, I, I got a lot more understanding in this than, than what I used to have. Right. Well, it isn't just so you can have all this understanding. There's going to come an opportunity, a door's going to open when you can give that to someone. Amen. Give it to them. Ruling. Oh, now, some people don't, don't like this one. And, and some people, I can see why they don't like this one, because in some places, this is like ruling over. I mean ruling like you're going to paint the building red because I said so. Now, what he's talking about here, talking about management, governments, talking about the one that stands in front of or outranks. You say, wait, there's somebody who outranks me? Yeah, there's somebody who outranks you. Now, somebody who has more understanding than you, uh, you should listen to them. Somebody who's been given more, sees more, has already been there, listen to them. They've been given the rule. Quite the very fact that they that the Lord's taken them through this place before. Yeah, that's yeah. it can be a great benefit to you. Just let them, let them rule. Mm -hmm. Well, how about someone who's been given charge over another in order to benefit them? Mm -hmm. The apostle said, not that we would rule over your faith. That isn't, but who would argue with the apostle? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people argue with the apostle. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of people. Just listen to them. They'll find themselves arguing with you. He, God did put him in the body first, right? First, yeah. So he, he's, he, you, he should be listened to, in other words. Amen. Mercy. Well, mercy is to have compassion or pity on having a desire to share the same mercy that you've obtained. See, see this, the gift of mercy, like Brother Given explained it very well, is, is that if you, if, do you have a desire, do you really genuinely have a desire to do this? And do you have the ability to do this? And because it, I'm telling you, God, not, he doesn't put something in you to go to waste, ever. If God's given you this gift, he'll open up these opportunities for you to be merciful, for you to be a helper. See, that word merciful in this context is slightly different than it is in, in some of the other contexts in the scriptures. If you look at the word itself, it, it's, a, it's a worth to note that all of these things listed here are things that have to be done. They're not things primarily but in the context of what he's saying, that need to be thought of, although they got to be thought of before you can do them. Don't get me wrong. But these things are things that are expressed. They're, they're done. You actually do these things. And you do them to the saints. I can't find anywhere where it says to do any of these things to the world or any of these things to someone who's, who's lost. There's things to do to them, but not these things. These things are, these are very specific things. They're given to the body of Christ. For the advancement of the body of Christ. So the apostle is telling everything in the body of Christ is being orchestrated by God through the Holy Spirit. See, it's like nothing's left a chance. You're, you're a part of a body. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. God put you into Christ. Why? Because that's the exact environment that's required for you to be able to crucify the flesh to be able to see, see, it's not just that you, I'm all going to nail it up to the cross. Or, oh boy, it's on the cross. That, that's not even the attitude. It's that see, he's, he's given you the, the ability to be able to crucify the flesh in order that you can excel. See, <laughs> you're, you're walking with Christ. I mean, the crucifixion of the flesh is, that's like, that has to be done, but it's not in the end of itself. It's in order that. You might experience, Amen. you can experience these gifts. You are a privileged people. You can walk with Christ. You can get ready for eternity. You can experience, you can experience a blessing. Nobody in the world can experience a blessing. God doesn't bless sinners. He doesn't do it. Say, well, the rain falls on, you know, so they got wet. I'm talking about a blessing that you can know 
that you're one of God's elect. Now, I guess you would have to know that to make it sure. You call them, make your calling and election sure. How do you do that? Well, yeah, the flesh has got to be crucified to do it. But look at this privilege. I'm making, I'm making my calling and election sure. No, I don't have time to come down. I don't have time to become involved in that. What's, what is that to me? Yeah. I'm making my calling and election sure. Amen. Yeah, I'm, I'm experiencing being merciful today. I found three opportunities to be merciful today. See, this is a divine attribute. This is something that, that God is merciful. So the fact that you, one, want to be merciful and that you have the ability to be merciful and you found an opportunity to be merciful, it very well could be that you have the gift of mercies. Amen. Well, now this is the case, happy are you. You're, <laughs> you, you're, you're, you should be in a delightful state of mind. You, you've been chosen by God to express mercy. Now, mercy isn't like you created it in your own mind. Mercy is from God, and he's expressing it through you to one of his people. You're, you've been like a vessel, yeah. a vessel of mercy. <laughs> oh, I like this. Amen. See, now there's options. There's other vessels. You can be a vessel of wrath. Yeah. There, there's other vessels. Yeah. I want to be a vessel of mercy. I want to be one that God has expressed his mercy on in order that we might be merciful. God's the one that set the members in the church, so he knows where you're at, and he knows what he gave you. Now, see, we're, actually, we're kind of catching up to speed when you realize, oh, I have one of these gifts. Yeah. And sometimes I think about the angels, are like, he finally got it. <laughs> he finally got it. He can be merciful. He doesn't have to be a griper. I know, I shouldn't have said that. And two of them, of these words in the Old, old Covenant Scriptures, in two instances, the first two that we find actually, it's talking about God being merciful to us. And it actually has the same word, 2 Samuel twenty two fifty one 51 and Psalms 18, 50. But it's revealing God's mercy towards man, which is absolutely critical. If any man's ever going to be merciful... God has to be merciful to them first. Yeah. See, this isn't, that proves that this is not of man. It's not like you, you, you looked out there and you were filled with such compassion. And so you laid down. That's just not going to happen. I mean, you all know your own flesh. Do you think your flesh is going to volunteer for something like that? It's going to be like, wait a minute, hold on a minute. What's in this for me? Yeah. Yet in Psalms 37, 21, it's like... David was given, now remember, David was a man after God's own heart. David says stuff like, how I love thy law. It's my meditation both night and day. Now, this just kind of like clues you into the heart of David. David saw something in the law that a lot of other people didn't see. It was a delight for him to think about the law. Well, that didn't happen with everybody, did it? They thought about the law and they wanted to run the other way. We're away from God. But David, the, the, thinking about the law, meditating on the law, he wanted to run to God. He is a man after my own heart. That's what God said. He got to see something because of, he, because of his heart was inclined towards God. He got to see something about the righteous that not a lot of people knew about in his time. This is what he said. Psalms 37, 21. The wicked borroweth. And payeth not again. You want to know the wicked. This is what the wicked does. They borrow and they don't pay back. But the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. This is what the righteous. The righteous. In other words, the righteous are endued with qualities from God. See, God's, God's working in them. Of course, now you say, well, wait a minute. I, I read it says, no, there's none righteous. No, not one. You see, you see. He, He's talking about something that God's impugned, God's given to you. Amen. It isn't like you worked it up in yourself. God's using you as a vessel unto mercy. Yeah. And David saw there is something about this righteous people. There are people that are righteous. 
God's inclined to do more in them than he is in any other people. David, you could say he was a man before his time. David would fit right in with this new covenant. He would. David's heart was sensitive to God, but it was sensitive to God through the law of God. See, it was through means. God gave a law, and David said, I love it. You see how that, that, that impacted God. God said, I love you. You love my law, I love you. Now, in, uh, in our text, we find these two words sandwiched together that it's an amazing because if you look in the original language, which I'm a big fan of, they, they're the same word. So I thought, well, that, tell, that told me a lot there. As it says, merciful, merciful then. Showeth mercy. Look, at the, look it up in the, in the Greek and it says, mercy, mercy. Like, well, that, that helped. God's determined to express his mercy for his people through his people. So he he develops this this concept, this thought of showing something that didn't originate with you. But you're going to be the one to show it. So God's worked mercy in you. He opened it up. You know that God's been merciful to you. I mean, you, you know it. You experienced it. Well, now... You didn't just experience it so you could experience it. It's so you you could be the very thing that you experienced. Merciful. Just as the other, all the other gifts, and that's why I wanted to go through them briefly, is is this as all the other gifts have a specific purpose and are given for a specific end. In other words, as they're used, as, as, as they're used, they're effective. None of the gifts are effective if they're not used. We know that. But this, this one is the same way. In other words, if I, don't, if I have an inclination to be merciful, but I, I choose not to be, maybe I'm angry. Maybe that will maybe hinder being merciful. I know in my own life, I, I have to testify that has hindered. I'll be upset about something. Why? Well, I know I should be merciful. But I'm just not going to do it. Nobody else knows I should be merciful, I think, in my mind at that moment. But see, why, why did I even think about being merciful? It's so I could crucify the flesh, put it aside, put aside this say It says, put aside all anger. Do it. So I'm talking to myself now. Put it aside. Why? So I can be merciful. So I can use the gift that God's given me and be merciful. Be a helper. Somebody else may need that yeah. much more than I'll ever, ever know. Amen. Just the fact that, so, that, that God's given you opportunity to be merciful, that mercy will impact that person's life in ways that you cannot, you cannot fully understand it here on this side of eternity. But you do it, and, and it will. It will change. It will change that person. Amen. Mercy. Showeth mercy. That, that's how I already said it's one word. Showeth mercy. In other words, it's an expressed mercy. It's not just like I understand fully what mercy means. I could go through the definitions. That, uh, the, to have mercy on, okay? To help one afflicted or seeking aid. To help the afflicted. But see, that falls far short of you experiencing it and doing it. It's effective. He's talking about showeth mercy. It's effective mercy. When it's done, when it's shown. In other words, when you you give it to somebody, when you actually do it. And of course, as I thought about this, the circumstances surrounding God showing me mercy were not the most favorable circumstances. They weren't. I didn't deserve mercy. In other words, I was obstinate. Now, you say, well, well, there was no other way to say it. I was obstinate. I was doing what I wanted to do. What did God do? He showed mercy. It's what he did. Now, so in other words, there's going to come a time when someone's going to look on the surface like they're against you. And they very well may be against you. But there's a quality about mercy. It came from God. In other words, with the mercy, as you are inclined to be merciful... The power to do it is, is built into it. You say, I'll be merciful. 
I, I, can't, I couldn't think back on any time in my life I had ever been merciful and been sorry for it. And, and thought back and said, well, I shouldn't have been so merciful. I shouldn't have. I should have held back that mercy. Look what they took advantage of that mercy. I couldn't think of it. There's a, um, in this passage, now there is God showing mercy to men, but that's not technically what this passage is about. It's about men showing mercy to men. It's about God working in you to show the mercy to men, but he's going to use you to do it. It's, it's um, what a privilege. I think I probably said that before, but I, I'm overwhelmed by this. It's a privilege to, to, it's a gift. Now, when I, Christmas time comes along or birthday comes along, I go to the store and I'll buy a gift for someone. I don't buy a gift for everyone in the store. I don't. And I, it's because I don't want to. It's just quite honestly, I don't want to buy a gift for I want to buy a gift for someone who's special to me. So I bought them a gift. And I take the gift to them and I give them the gift. Now, if they just threw it under the couch or something and said, okay, thanks a lot, whatever. I wouldn't be real impressed with that. In fact, it would hurt me, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, see, God's given you these gifts. They're gifts to be used in his body in order that the body might be presented. Amen. See, faultless. it's working, it's active, it's effective in doing what God wants done. Men outside of Christ cannot properly accomplish the intended purpose of revealing the person of God. Now, they can't understand what mercy is. They're, you could be merciful to them, and I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not saying you, because obviously they're without. They're without. They don't know. They, they really don't know. The scripture says if they had known who Jesus was, they wouldn't have crucified him. So they don't know. So showing mercy towards men, this is, this is not a, a reach, if you can understand what I'm saying. This is not like the hardest thing to do to show mercy to men that are ignorant and out of the way because that's like, should be, that should be like an automatic thing. It, that, these, these people are ignorant. But how about someone who isn't ignorant? How about someone who says, I know the Lord. I'm walking in the light as he is in the light. And yet... They offend you. They do something to you. They, they, see, now this actually becomes more difficult. You have to actually call on more resources and say, wait a minute. You know, I, I don't want to see them after the flesh, and yet look at what they've done. And You see, you see what I'm saying? This complicates the issue. When, but how are you going to do this? Well, one, the ones that, those that are on the outside are the enemies of God. So, well, you'd be merciful to them to some degree. But see, those who are in Christ, well, I, I'm falling short on being able to understand, to be able to express this. There is a contrast there. And um, it seems to me like, like God is, is, is going to use you in a way to express this mercy to this brother so that it will correct the situation. So that it won't, it won't be what it could be if you didn't express mercy. See, in this, in this expression of mercy, this men expressing mercy towards men, it can't be accomplished independent from us doing it. God isn't going to like boom out of heaven and because the, the scenario is that it's in his body. So we're all in his body. We're all here. So as I was thinking about it, you know, this, it shouldn't surprise me if situations arise that require mercy. It shouldn't. If you're a vessel of mercy, God's been merciful to you, then it shouldn't surprise you then that you're called upon to express what he's made you. Well, I'll move on from that. I, I'm going to think of that one through some more. The expression of mercy to men. Now, I want to give examples. Sister Nita brought it up. And there's two examples, and then I'll be done, of this, um, of this expression about something that, that could happen that unless mercy is, is expressed, unless you're merciful, it could have changed everything. Now, here's Barnabas. 
in Acts 9, 26, And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. Yeah. Yes. And believed not that he was a disciple. Now, you, I, I was, this, is like a, this is a hard situation for, for Saul, isn't it? He comes there. He knows what happened on the road, right? He knows the, the, the commission that, God, that Christ gave him on the road. He knows. He comes there to join himself. And they said, no, we're, we're afraid of you. Now, from their standpoint, he was murdering Christians, right? I mean, he would take them in. Now, from his standpoint, he wasn't murdering because he was doing it as unto the Lord. But we know the scriptures on this. But from their standpoint, oh, it looked completely different from their standpoint. This is the man that's been catching us all and killing us. And they had every reason in their mind to be afraid. But that wasn't the end of this story. See, something needed, something needed to be done here. God didn't like boom out of heaven. And, and in a vision, you see what I'm saying? He, he uses one of the members of the body. Barnabas steps up. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. See, Barnabas was a, was a brother in good standing. Yeah. So Barnabas steps up, says, wait a minute. And declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So Barnabas is going to take, he's going to be merciful and at the same time, that, that same mercy to Paul, I, I can tell you, at the time, Paul was very thankful for Brother Barnabas. Yeah. And they're very thankful for Brother Barnabas, too, because look he, how he's cleared this whole thing up. They can trust Brother Barnabas, and in time, because this mercy was expressed, they're going to trust Brother Paul, too. Mm -hmm. So see this... <clears throat> This is the way God chose to do it, through the members of the body. Now, another one is in 2 Corinthians 1.23, where Paul helps the Corinthians. And he does it in, in such a, a, a nice way. Look at this. Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul that to spare you. I didn't want to destroy you. To spare you, I came not as yet unto Corinth. Not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy. For you stand by faith. Now, now, if Paul knew that if he went there prematurely, this would not be good for them. This would not be good. But Paul was, was merciful. Paul wrote letters. Paul, Paul dealt with it in such a way that he wanted to see the advancement of the brethren, not the destruction of the brethren. Yeah. There was some very real problems there. And Paul kind of knew, if I go there... It's, things are going to be, <laughs> uh, it's, it's going to be hard on them. And, and, but see, Paul chose the best way. He was merciful to them. And that doesn't mean that he overlooked their sin. We know that. We got the record. He didn't overlook it, but he did it in such a way that mercy could be expressed. And look what it did. Look what the mercy did. Yeah. It changed the whole, the whole situation. Well, I'm going to just go ahead and close with this. Now, you, you're going to find, and you all know this already, but it's good to be reminded of it. You're going to find many opportunities in the assembly to where maybe you're right. Maybe technically you're right about this. They, they shouldn't have sat in my chair. And I, that's a kind of a silly thing, but you see what I'm saying. <laughs> they shouldn't have. But you go ahead and, and be merciful. I mean, some places this is an issue, but, but you go ahead and be merciful. You, the door's open. It's wide open. You can express as much mercy as you can see. It, 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 there's no law against it, to be merciful. You go ahead and be merciful, and it's going to rectify a lot of flesh problems in the assembly. I, I asked myself the question, now, if I was going to call upon the brethren to be a helper of me, would I want them to change my flat tire? Or would I want them to be used by God to bless me, to understand something? Yeah, I'm not saying that helps doesn't necessarily mean physical things, because it does. But there's a greater use of this work. 
a greater use of this is I have come to see things that I never even knew existed because the brethren were merciful to me. I need the brethren to be merciful to me. But, um, and all these gifts, as they operate in the body, they create an environment for advancement. Yes. And that's exactly what I want. Amen. And I know that so the brethren want the same thing. Amen. Well, thank you very much. Brother.